video, we're going to be talking about how to wash a house step by step. We're going to be breaking down every facet from prep work, on the property, inspections, removing stuff, hose running, wash, everything, okay? All the way till the end. So if you guys stick around with us, you're going to be getting full package here. But if you guys want over eight hours of in-person training, check out the how to wash course. You'll be seeing us on site going through properties, talking about all the things from how to mix chemicals, the equipment, property protection, pro tips, time equals money, the things that are going to save you time so you can make more money, as well as just getting the experience that you might be lacking in the beginning of your business. So if you're somebody who wants to start a pressure washing business, you don't have a lot of confidence with regards to how to wash these properties, you need to be getting the how to wash course. First link in the comment section description, you can get ECP certified and learn from the core four, from the comfort of your own home. A lot of people have taken it and a lot of people have had some really great results. So in this video, we're going to go deep to how to wash a house. Obviously, we won't be able to cover all the facets. We couldn't cover seven hours of training in a single live. And so if you guys do want to get the how to wash course, it's the cost of one house wash, which is so small compared to the money you're going to make. Cheap with house wash. But Mike doesn't even charge that little for house washes, right, Mike? No, I don't. But the first things first is prep work, Mike, right? Obviously, we can't get a house wash if we don't have the things in place that we need to do it. So let's talk a little bit about what we're going to need to get in order with regards to equipment, chemicals, things of that nature before we can actually go out and do anything. First and foremost, obviously, you're going to need some means of applying chemical, whether that's a 12 volt, 24 volt, a super pump from Southeast Soft Wash, right? Or pressure washing, downstream injecting. You know, I think it's important to understand that soft washing is kind of an all encompassing term that is also used for downstream injecting using a pressure washer because we're never really using any significant amount of pressure anyway when we're doing house wash. So you got to have that. Obviously, you need to have a good understanding of how to use the equipment efficiently because time is money and we want to we want to get in and out as quickly as possible. So you have to have good equipment. The more flow you have, the better. Eight gallons per minute, 10 gallons per minute. That's the cat's meow, if you will. You can do and get the job done with much smaller machine, a 2.9. But again, it's, it's how efficient are you going to be? So you got to have the right equipment. Then you have to have the proper understanding and knowledge of the chemicals used in order to clean the different surfaces. Primarily in this scenario that we're talking about as far as a house wash, we are going to be using sodium hypochlorite, SH bleach, right? And this is what is going to help to kill and remove the mold and the mildew and any other kind of organic matter on the house. We're going to need, like I said, you're going to need hoses. You're going to need backups. You're going to need the equipment and the, and the stuff that you need. Everybody knows the equipment that you need, right? But more importantly, it's the, it's the little things that are inevitably going to be needed will go bad. The consumables on the job, whether that's a something like a 12 volt pump, have an extra, whether it's a chemical injector, extra hose, 50 foot length of hose, 100 foot length of hose, because these things will go bad. And the last thing that you want to do is be on the job in the middle of it. Something goes wrong. You're not prepared to move forward because you don't have the right stuff. Then you're leaving, getting, you know, and it's just a bad look and it's just an inefficient way to, to run things. So be prepared. That's the bottom line. Like you said, we can't go into everything that you need to know and, and have on the truck in order to work with efficiency, you got to be prepared. So that's kind of as far as the preparation before you even show up to the property. And within the how to wash course, we actually go through the truck and we go through all these bits and pieces that we're talking about in this video. Mike kind of shows all the little extras that he's got on site. One thing I want to bring up with regards to washing in general, having a wash business is Murphy's law, right? Anything that can go wrong eventually will. And you guys will know that the more that you do washing. And just as Mike is talking about, Mike, I'm sure you've learned from countless occasions that something goes wrong on site, a piece of equipment breaks. And if we don't have a backup, just like you said, you're running out, your your whole day is pretty much gone because you're having to go out. Something as simple as a tire patch kit in the glove box of your truck, an extra trailer tire, because there are going to be flat tires. And imagine being on the side of the road, disconnecting your trailer, going to Walmart or going to wherever to grab another tire, coming back. That's not how you want to be. You want a, a jack, a floor jack. Like these are all things that you need. Like you said, we learned the hard way and now we're equipped and you have to be a good manager as well. And you have to know what you have. It, I don't know how many times I've had guys over the years that work for me call me. They're like, um, I don't have any chemical injectors. I'm like, why don't you have any chemical injectors? Well, I used them all. Well, when you use the last one, why didn't you tell me so we can order more? Or when you were at the supply house getting bleach, why didn't you get some more chemical injectors or fittings or this, that O-rings? These are the things that over time with experience, you're going to know the things that you're going to need because I've probably lost three weeks of workable hours uh, over the course of our, you know, the business 
because of just stupidity and not being prepared. Absolutely. So if we were to kind of make it a little bit easier for you guys and kind of summarize, you need a pressure washer, chemical applicator, and then chemicals, right? In order to put them on the house. The next thing is, is once we have everything, we've been able to land that that job. We, me and Mike talk about marketing all the time, which it's kind of funny. Me and Mike also make jokes that you guys don't care as much about marketing. We will make videos with the best marketing information that we have. Nobody will watch them. But if we make a video about a piece of equipment, it gets a lot more views. So just so you guys know, the marketing piece is the most important piece, okay? If you got out there with a pump up sprayer and a water hose and you were washing houses that way, but you had the best marketing. This is the framework for growing your business, landing customers from day one to, you know, year 20. How to wash is, you know, it's, it's, it's a phenomenal course and everybody gravitates towards that. And they're like, oh yeah, marketing sales. Like, oh, I'll figure that out. They're both important. So absolutely. But it's good to, it's good for you guys to know upfront before you're starting your business. I assume that most people watching this video are going to be starting a business. That's why they want to know about how to wash a house. And it's good to know that with regards to the balance on equipment and, and marketing, marketing needs to outweigh it. At the end of the day, I heard somebody say this, we are a marketing company that just happens to offer pressure washing. So the better we could be at our marketing, the more customers we bring in, we can ultimately reinvest that money into better equipment to better serve those customers. So marketing first, equipment second, but obviously you need that stuff to get the job done. So pressure washer, chemical and chemical applicators. Next, let's say we got the job, we're on the property, Mike, once on the property, uh, we need to do our pre-inspection form. Let's talk about how important having a pre-inspection is. The pre-inspection serves multiple purposes. What this allows us to do, and, and we've developed a electronic pre-inspection that's inside of Quote IQ. It's got the, the 28 main things that we look for. It's completely editable, so you can add whatever it is that you want. But you basically run down this checklist as you walk the property. And and for our business, what what my guys do is when they, ro when they roll up to the house before they do anything else, they go directly to the front door. They ring the doorbell. Homeowner comes out, they introduce themselves. You know, you build that initial rapport. Uh, everybody's friendly, everybody's smiling. They're in uniforms, they look nice. Um, and, and, and we do this for, again, there's, there's a multitude of reasons and it all builds on top of each other. But when you start building a relationship there, guess what happens when it's time to ask for a review or, or they, you know, they get the invoice and there's a, a tip option on, on the invoice. Like they're more likely to, you know, be nice and, and leave a review or leave a tip for your technician or yourself, whatever the case is. Anyway, we knock on the door, we introduce ourselves, we say, hey, we're about to do a pre-inspection walkthrough. Would you like to come with us? Just in case you want to point anything out, areas of concern for you. And we do this because there might be something that really bothers them. And if we get that spot, anything else, you know, maybe we miss something else, but that's the thing that they're really focused on. So we give them the opportunity to talk to us, tell us, you know, their pain points, what they're looking at. Then we're able to walk around. A, you're getting a, a good idea of what you're going to be dealing with on the property. So mentally you can prepare how you're going to go about the job at hand. As you're walking around, you know, you're, you're taking note of any kind of potential issues, uh, existing issues. You're again, protecting your business by documenting everything. And then you send it to the customer via text, via email, whatever the case is. And and, you know, if they're there with you, even better. The other great thing about a, a, a walk through a 28 point inspection is it gives you the opportunity to upsell the customer, whether they're there or not. You know, as you're walking around, you might notice their patio is really bad. Their service yard is bad. They've got stuff growing out of their gutters. You can hit them with a text. If they're there, point stuff out. It's huge opportunity to increase the average ticket price at every single job, simply doing the inspection because you see everything and you can point things out. So uh, really good stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Another thing to keep in mind with regards to the inspection is it's a great time to offer upsells. Now, I want to show you guys what this inspection form looks like. If you guys are curious, you can check out myquoteiq.com. You can actually try any tier of quote IQ right now for just a dollar, but you have a spot for, you know, the customer's name, the technician's name, all the property photos. You can actually build out your own custom uh, templates with regards to the inspection forms. It just comes preset if you guys select pressure washing as a service for Mike's template. So in Mike's template, he's obviously already done the research on the things that need to be covered within it. So he's got like front door. Did we cover with plastic uh, front door stain issues, wood rot? All this stuff helps you document everything on the property so that way uh, you can bring it to the customer's attention before you do the work. The other cool thing is, is every single inspection form is saved underneath uh, the customer's profile. So I'm going to click through to here. I don't have any inspection forms under this customer, but if I did, they would pop up right here. So that way you have these inspection forms forever underneath uh, all of these different customers. So if you go in the, if you go later on or if you get blamed for something later on or if you need to reference it, uh, it's, it's where you need it. So I just wanted to share that, but Mike, let's talk a little bit about uh, upselling on properties. Obviously the inspection form, you're going to be documenting everything around the property, gives you a good 
a chance to kind of check out how the concrete looks, check out how the roof looks, check out, you know, any other services, any stain removals that we can offer. So how important is it that we're looking for these kind of things before we start the work? Well, it's, it's key. And, you know, like I just said previously, you're trying to increase the average ticket price, every opportunity you have, uh, the more work that you can do at the job at the same time, it makes better business sense, right? You're being more efficient. You're looking at the roof. You're looking at the gutter clean out. You're looking at everything on the property, any service that you provide, looking for opportunity to talk to the customer. And, you know, you can send pictures through the inspection form if they're if they don't happen to be there you know you just say hey mrs jones you know i was walking the property doing my inspection form that's attached i also noticed a couple areas that might be of concern i've I put some pictures here your driveway is looking really rough you've got some algae on your roof i noticed too we can get that cleaned up here's a couple prices it all works together in order to help you do a little bit of upselling so we've done the prep work we've got our, our equipment we've got our first job we've gone out and we're taking the pictures of the property we're meeting with the homeowner shaking hands kissing babies the next step in the process is to actually remove anything that's going to intrude in the way of us performing the job. Removing things as well as prepping areas. And now we are ready to actually wash the property. Now, if you guys want to be, you know, basic beginner, if you want to be bottom level with regards to running a business, don't worry about any of the things we said. Show up on the property, plug your washer up, and just, just start going. So the next step is we're going to run our hoses, we're going to get the washer going, and uh, we're going to start our pre-treatment. So Mike, can you kind of walk us through that a little bit? Right. And, and this all goes back to organization, being prepared. You know, I've seen guys that just jumble up all their hoses and they throw them on a truck in the back of a truck. Organization, it's key. It's almost an art form. Like Mac, if you watch any of my videos and you watch him, like he goes and during the pre-inspection, he is looking also for all of the water spigots. So he knows exactly where to go when it's time to do this. He's not searching for it like and wasting time. So he grabs his water hose from the hose reel, goes, he plugs it in, and then he pulls all of his pressure hose off of the hose reel. He does um, this like crazy figure eight. So it's, it's, you know, everything is when he starts pulling, it goes easy. It's efficient. It's fast. Again, have a method, have a process, have the same procedure every single time. That's why McDonald's is, is successful. That's why when you go to Chick-fil-A, you hardly wait in line, even though there's 30 cars in front of you because they have a process, right? And the process is proven and it works. And you need to do this with your setup as well. So you get everything set up. You're prepared while you're doing your inspection. You're in your mind formulating how you're going to go about doing this. You know, we like to start from one corner, depending on the size of the house, the, the heat of the day, and you start applying your detergent. Primarily, we're using a uh, soft wash system with a downstream injector, right? So a pressure washer, downstream injector, applying our chemical. We'll start on one corner and we'll work all the way, all, all the way around or as far as we can get with the hose. And then we come back around and depending if it's super hot out, we might start rinsing because you don't want that chemical to dry on the windows on the house. Then you're going to spend more time rinsing and it just, it's going to, you know, not be as efficient. And if it's a super big house, then of course you're going to want to work in sections as well. Apply, rinse. And, you know, there's all kinds of discussions about applying from, you know, the bottom and down top, whatever the case is, it really doesn't matter. But obviously you're going to rinse from the top down. So gravity's, you know, helping remove all of the debris and the, the buildup. So then, you know, that's the process. It's a simple application, a simple rinse. And I tell my guys when I'm training them, uh, one of the biggest callbacks that we used to get, and, and we don't get them anymore, is spots on windows. And that's because people rush the process, right? They're like, okay, I want to get in and out. Well, it's great to get in and out unless you get called back because you've missed a spot or you've let, you know, chemical dry on the windows or you didn't rinse the chemical off the window well enough. And now they're sitting in their kitchen. They're looking out the window of their freshly paid, you know, uh, cleaned house that they paid hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars to have clean. Yet now their windows are all spotted. That's going to piss people off. That's going to make it a lot harder for me to get a review when they are looking out their window and they're like, wow, this, what, what did I pay for? I don't, you know, so spend the time rinsing. Rinse the windows once. If you think they're clean, rinse them again. Once you think they're really clean, rinse them again. And then just for good measure, hit them again, right? It's a high volume rinse. That's what we call it. Just to ensure that we're not getting called back and you're leaving uh, the best results possible for your customers. But that's essentially it. And then you work your way around the house. Right. I got a couple questions for you with regards to that, Mike. But one thing I do want to mention beforehand is the percentage of chemical that you're using for these properties or, or these services is dependent upon what surface that you're cleaning, right? We can use a hotter mix on asphalt shingle roofs than we can a driveway. 
um, or no asphalt shingle roofs and driveways than we can like a house uh, or vinyl and things of that nature. So if you guys need help with mixing your chemicals, be sure to check out the uh, mix calculator within Quote IQ. It's in the resources section. It is a free resource in there. Uh, when I was washing houses solo, I too conscious of the things that I was missing. I was like going and hitting areas more times than I probably need to. So Mike, can we kind of talk about the balance? Because I know that your technician is extremely detailed oriented and that's one of his good traits, but also being too much can also be a negative. I know how long things should take. I've got a lot of years of experience. Mac has been with me for, I think this is going to be his fourth year. He is very, very good. He's very efficient. He has got OCD and to a, to a point where it's it slows him down because he wants everything to be absolutely perfect. And I have to tell him all the time, it's not going to be absolutely perfect. We want it to be damn near perfect, right? We want our customers to come out and be wowed. But like you said, there is a delicate balance this is a business. We have to be profitable. You have to make a profit. If you're not making enough money to cover the time, what's the purpose? Or raise your prices. If you're going to be OCD guy and you're going to spend six hours on a two hour job, you better be charging for it. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time. We talked about a lot of different stuff, right? Getting ready, getting prepared, having all the stuff you need, uh, all the things that come before the job actually starts, having a plan of attack once you get there and then being organized uh, with everything that you're doing. So once we kind of get towards the end of the job, Mike, one thing that I really like doing early on in this, you know, I'd, I'd like your opinion on it, whether or not this is kind of like a time suck is walking the property with the homeowner afterwards. What do you think about that? I think this is one of the greatest things that you can do because it is going to eliminate a tremendous amount of headaches. Knock, knock, knock. Hey, Mrs. Jones, we're all done. I just wanted to come out, you know, come up and ask if there was anything, if you'd like to walk the property, take a look around. Maybe we missed something. Two sets of eyes is better than one. And we'd rather take care of it now while we're here than you have to call us back. So uh, if you if you got a couple minutes, can we just take a look around? This is gonna this is gonna do two things. Again, it's building trust, it's building that relationship, it's showing you, uh, it's showing the customer that you care. And there's a saying, people don't care. Um, about you. They don't care about, you know, what your marketing is. They don't care about, but what they do is they care about what you did for them. And if you take the time and really show that you are conscientious and you, you genuinely care about them and their property, they're going to remember that. And that's huge. So walk the property, even if it's just asking them, Hey, we're all done. And if they're like, yeah, we're good, you know, then, okay, great. But you always want to walk the property. But this also gives you the opportunity to ask personally for a review. And it's a lot easier uh, in person just to say, hey, we did a good job and you were really happy with how everything turned out. Yeah, well, we, we, I'm really happy. Great. Would you be uh, okay with leaving us a, a five-star Google review? Uh, I can send you my link right now if you've got your phone. Or if you know that doesn't work out, you can say, hey, you know, when you send, we're, I'm going to send you an invoice. Uh, once that's paid, it's going to take you right to my Google business profile page. If you could leave us a, a Google review, that would be great. Now I've, I've increased the number of reviews that I've gotten for my business. I don't even know. We're getting probably 10 to 11 reviews every seven to 10 days because of the review multiplier that we built into quote IQ that does just that. We send the invoice. Everybody pays their invoice online. Once they click pay and that payment goes through, boom, they go right to your Google business profile page, prompting them to leave you a five-star review. So if you can't do it on, you know, in, in person, then do it when you're sending the invoice through quote IQ. Right. Which is absolutely free within quote IQ. All you do is go into the settings tab, uh, click the review multiplier, copy or put your link in right here. And the thing is, the thing why it works so well is because it makes it a seamless part of the transaction. The customer pays automatically brings them there. It feels like that's the last step of the transaction. Leave your review and um, you're going to be able to multiply your reviews that way. So with regards to walking the property with the customer after, it does a couple things. First and foremost, they're not going to be as, they're not going to scrutinize you as heavily as when they're walking it later with their spouse and they're like looking with the magnifying glass and everything because they're just kind of glazing over, right? Like you're like, hey, you want to walk the property together? Okay, great. Hey, we did this here. We did that here. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, it looks great. Okay. Then the thing is, is when they walk the property with you, they can't really like, they're not going to reach out to you later and say, hey, you missed this because it's like, well, we walked the property together and I said, if I miss anything while we're here, we'll take care of it. So that's benefit number one. Benefit number two is it allows you to point out any extras that you did. So for instance, sometimes we'll knock out like a little patio or something, or we'll move something and make sure we hit it, hit behind it. It gives me the opportunity to say, I went ahead and did a little extra for you. We, we moved this or we took care of this for you. And that's what usually gets you a little bit extra on the review, gets you a little little bit extra on the tip. And it, it's just another little added benefit. And it's all in how you phrase it too, you know? And if you don't know how important reviews are, trust me, you're going to want them and you're going to need them. So uh, 
walk the property with the homeowner at the end. Obviously, at that point, you can then pack up. Um, you can invoice the customer through Quota Q or whatever way that you'd like to invoice. That's pretty much the entire process. Wouldn't you say so, Mike? Is there anything we kind of left out? No, I mean, you know, obviously we kind of glazed over, you know, there, there, there are a lot of intricacies as far as washing houses. And we touched briefly, you know, you've got different types of stains. You've got different types of surfaces that you're cleaning. You've got vinyl, you've got stucco, you've got cedar shakes, you've got concrete, you've got asphalt shingle, you've got asphalt driveways, you've got paver driveways, you've got tile roofs. I mean, there is a plethora of, of surfaces on a property on, on, and sometimes there's multiple surfaces and you have to understand how to clean these different surfaces. All of them are going to take different mix ratios, right? So you have to understand that, you know, some surfaces, they are going to be needing a, a more significant uh, amount of detergent in order to get it clean properly or quickly. And so, you know, these are just things that are over time, you're going to, you know, you're going to have a good understanding. Like, we know if there's like a vinyl house and it's got stucco and the stucco is severely stained, we're probably going to want to just use the soft wash system uh, because we know we're going to have to hit that stucco with a much stronger mix than we're capable of doing with just a pressure washer and a downstreamer. So a lot of things come into play. Then you run into scenarios, rust stains, right? Um, maybe there's uh, red dirt, you know, clay on the property that needs to be removed and, and bleach ain't going to do it. Uh, there, there's a, you know, all kinds of things that you might run into that you're going to have to have a knowledge of specialty chemicals. You're going to have to understand, you know, the right way to do it. You're not going to want to blast dirt daubers off of stucco with pressure because you're going to damage the stucco, right? So how do you do that? You know, you get an extension pole. It's got a rag on the end, maybe some degreaser. You know, you douse it, then you rinse it with, uh, you know, a long range or a tall reach tip. These are the things that, you know, are very important to understand because it's not simply just starting at point A and walking around to point B. I kind of glossed over it, so I apologize for that. There is a lot to it. And, you know, it takes it takes experience and it takes knowledge. And, uh, you know, both of these things are things that you can get in, in the how to wash training. But um, that's, you know, that's essentially it. But this is why we say start with friends and family first. Friends and family are going to be more forgiving with you on those first couple of jobs. You need those first friends and family jobs in order to test the equipment, test the chemicals in order to see, you know, how easy it is to clean in order to develop a workflow. Like there's a lot of pieces here. And um, obviously we try to cover as much as we can in this video within the local, uh, within the local domination course, within the how to wash course, we actually go through each individual search surface, how to clean it, each individual service and how to, and how to, you know, provide it as well. So it's much more in depth. We try to give you guys kind of a, a scope of everything. I think this video is more of the things that lie outside of the actual washing. I think that was more so the benefit of this one. I mean, me and Mike even have videos on the channel where we talk about the specifics, the specific mechanics around the washing, but it's the things that you don't notice that you need. You know what I mean? You don't notice that you need all the communication up front. You don't notice the communication on the back end. You don't know the setting expectations. So I think all that stuff is, is very important as well. One of the things that I did want to cover before we wrap this up was the biggest things that can go wrong, right? We talked a little bit about obviously the pre-inspection kind of prevents a lot of that. Um, we talked about the misconceptions early on in people's businesses that pressures the way that we clean when it's actually uh, soft washing with a chemical application to remove organic matter. Uh, but is there anything else that, you know, we kind of need to be mindful of that that can go wrong in these jobs? A, you, I mean, you kind of just nailed it. You have to be mindful of every job. You want to leave that property in better condition than you left it. And if you're breaking stuff, if you're damaging stuff, if you're squirting water and bleach into electrical outlets that's shorting them out, you're not leaving it in a better situation than when you arrived. And so ultimately, that's what, you know, when I'm training my guys, that's one of the things that I say. It needs to be a hundred, not a hundred percent because it's not going to be, they're still going to, you need to have a dramatic impact on the appearance of this property. And when those homeowners come back, they need to understand the value that they paid for, right? They need to see what you did and, and how you went about doing it. Right. And that's being mindful of their property. That's moving the plants. That's protecting, you know, their property in, in every capacity, whether it's the, the, the ring doorbell that you cover with some tape, the, the electrical outlets, even if they've got the outdoor covers on, you need to make sure the seals are good. These are all things that you have to do. Otherwise, you're going to get a bad reputation and people aren't going to call you back the next year. 
I will say this though, if you're somebody who's watching this video and if specifically you made it this far in the video, you were ahead of about 85 to 90% of everybody out there that's going to try to start a pressure washing business and that's going to actually go wash houses because we're giving you guys the, the top level, the high level knowledge here. Whenever I first started, I didn't know any of this, Mike. I had to learn it by being bullied on the internet. I was just washing houses with pressure and I barely even used any chemical unless right. there was something like crazy. Then I would like whip out the uh, pump up sprayer, but I didn't realize how important it was. I didn't realize how much quicker it made the jobs go. So if you guys are kind of on the fence of like, oh, well, you know, chemical, do I really need it? Where do I get it? All this kind of stuff. Just know that it's important. It speeds up, speeds up the job and allows you to make more money.